today I would like uh, to show you how we use uh, the photothermal system um, to explore uh, the composition of uh, the microcalcification in the breast tissue. So first, the breast cancer is the second most causes of cancer death in women in the UK. But I would like to say that uh, women, a uh, man can also be affected by this pathology. It is rare, but not impossible. So breasts are well connected with the different part of the body. They are uh, well drained, well vascularized. They are composed of different structures, such as uh, lobes, ducts, and fat tissue. And unfortunately, the cancer can take place in these um, different areas. For example, in a duct, uh, due to different factors such as uh, genetic, uh, lifestyle, or hormonal factors, observe different changes in the breast tissue. The cells uh, may acquire the ability to, to change their behavior, to develop a tumor but also to change their phenotypes and uh, invade, migrate and invade uh, other, other parts of the body, uh, such as brains, bones, everywhere. So at this stage, it's a very poor prognosis for the patient. That's why it is really important to have an early diagnosis um, to improve the survival rates and uh, the treatment response. And in this context, the microcalcifications appear to be a unique early marker for breast cancer detection. So what is a microcalcification? So it's defined by a pathological calcium deposit in the mammary tissue. So you have different kinds of calcification. Calcification type 1 composed of calcium oxalate found only in the benign lesion. Calcification type 2 composed of hydroxyapatite find in benign and malignant lesion. This type of crystal is really interesting. That's why I focused all my entire study uh, on this calcification. So it's really interesting because in biological tissue, we don't have a pure hydroxyapatite form, but we can find due to differences in pH, temperature, etc., uh, different ion substitution and the most common substitution is the carbonate ion substitution. So you have two kinds of substitution. So when the carbonate group replaces an hydroxyl group, it's a substitution type A. When the carbonate group replaces a phosphate group, it's a substitution type B. So the method to detect uh, the calcification is the mammography. So based on their appearance, their morphology, their special distribution, so you can classify the calcification. So for example, a casting type shape is always related to a very poor prognosis for the patient. But finally, we don't know what is the relationship between the morphology of the calcification and the occurrence of the cancer. This technique doesn't give us any information about chemical information about this calcification. And even for the radiologist, sometimes it's really difficult to discriminate a calcification from a benign lesion to a malignant lesion. So we, we need another approach. And a lot of studies suggest that vibrational spectroscopy could give us this information. So there is a lot of papers that suggest it is possible to, to, to have a link between the level of carbonate substitution or the proteins level in the microcalcification and the degree of the pathology. So during my PhD, I worked on breast tissue section, different breast tissue sections. This is a frozen, an example of IR and Raman spectra of frozen tissue sections. So it is possible to see the features of uh, the calcification with the phosphate peak in Raman IR, but also for the carbonates. But 
how to, we, we, how to be accurate, for example, when in, in the Raman spectra, you can detect the carbonate peak at 1071 wave numbers, but this peak is always overlaid with the phosphate peak at 1070 wave numbers. How to be sure we have a real uh, carbonate substitution in our sample? And the most difficult part, challenging part, um, during my PhD, it's because in our system, FTIR system, it's impossible to detect the carbonate peak at 874 wave numbers. So how can we, can we correlate the data to be sure we have this uh, carbonate substitution in our sample and check the heterogeneity, finally, of the calcification? So that's why we would like to use the Mirage system to, to discriminate the calcification with the carbonate uh, ions in their hydroxyapatite crystal. So we would like to compare the different uh, system that we have in our, in our lab with the phototermal system. So as Mustafa already described, we, are, we have a lot of advantages to use uh, this new technology. And in particular with the the quantum case catalyzer, we can select individual IR wavelengths of interest, so the phosphate and the carbonate, and it is faster than we have with, we have with the global, global thermal, thermal source. And the most important advantage for us with this new technology is that we can use IR and Raman spectroscopy at the same time, it's the same spot. So we can finally, we hope, to, to be accurate in our, in our analysis and be confident that we, we, we have carbonate substitution in our microcalcification. So this is my experimental protocol. So we don't have any background, uh, I mean, database on the, in terms of spectral feature in the microcalcification with the Mirage system. We need to, cre to, to create it. So I started with two kinds of samples. So I work with the mineral powders I use as standards. They have a similar composition as the calcification in the tissue. They are made of hydroxyapatite with with different range of uh, carbonate substitution in the lattice. So I also use different breast tissue sections with different uh, signet, different substrates, and I've compared everything. So an FTIR, FTIR imaging system, a Raman system, and the Mirage system. So this is an example of a spectra obtained with the mineral powders. So first, I, I, I want to say, to perform the FTIR analysis, I need to, to perform some KBR pellets. I cannot use directly the powder. Um, so it's a long process, a boring process. It's almost one hour per pellet. If it's properly done, if it's not broken, and it's really sensitive to the humidity, so I need to be very quick with uh, my analysis, which is not the case with the uh, Mirage system, because like the Raman system, I put the powder onto the substrate, I put it under the microscope, and in two minutes, I have very nice spectra. So as you can see, this is an FTIR spectra of my hydroxyapatite powder with a different concentration of carbonate substitution. So you can see you increase the, the carbonate uh, concentration and you decrease uh, the concentration of phosphate. So we have the OPTIR spectra in this part. So you can see we have a good agreement between both uh, kind of spectra, but I would say we have a slight differences in terms of peak position, but we still need to investigate why, but to be, to be very accurate with the KBR pellets, I take finally an average of different of the powder of the sample, different crystals with the OPTIR, I'll, I'll focus only with one crystal, one 
specific parts of uh, the crystal. So to be very accurate, I maybe need to, to, to do some measurement with different crystal and make an average, a kind of average. But in any case, it's not a random uh, peaks. Um, it's in line with the literature. We can assign the different uh, peak position. So to do that, I've performed a curve fit analysis. I reveal all the sub uh, in the phosphate region, and it's correlated to the second derivative. So this is for the uh, lowest concentration of carbonate substitution. This is for the highest um, uh, uh, carbonate substitution. So in parallel, I worked on different breast tissue sections. So using the FTIR system, imaging system, the Raman system. So you can see the different uh, IR and Raman images for the phosphate peak intensity with a huge calcification there. And I also wanted to illustrate an example of a single IR um, wavelength images image at for the phosphate peak. So as you can see, it's really difficult to discriminate a calcification with a standard um, IR system. But with the, with the phototermal system, with a high resolution, finally, we can see we have still a calcification, but really diffuse in the tissue, really, really small spots in the tissue, which is complex. and really hard to visualize with, um, with the other instrument that we have in our lab. This is really interesting and we really need to investigate a more sample uh, to see um, the heterogeneity of the different calcifications. So we have extracted different spectra from the different images that you, we have with the different system. So don't try to compare the different peak position because it's not uh, the same, uh, exactly the same spot. So this is with the classic FTIR imaging system. So you can see we have the phosphate peak. So it's a bit saturated. We have a high absorbent there, so which is not the case with the OPTIR spectrum. We have a nice um, phosphate peak, which is due to the thickness of the sample, which we don't have. We don't have this issue with the phototermal system. And more exciting, more important part that we can cover the long infrared region with the carbonate peak, which is really exciting. So we have done the same job with the, the same work with the Raman system. So this is the Renishaw system and the Raman from the phototermal system. So we have a good agreement between both. We have the phosphate peak there, the carbonate peak, and really nice, uh, good uh, spectra. Once again, don't try to compare the, the peak position. It's not the same uh, spot and the same slide. So to create a database, I try to perform a peak decomposition to check everything was uh, in line with the literature. So I've compared the FTIR system, the OPTIR, the OPTIR system. So we have a good agreement both. We, everything is in line with the literature and the second derivative as well. So we can say we can finally trust uh, the, the Mirage system, and maybe we can just analyze the sample with this system and completely forgot uh, the FTIR imaging system and the Raman system. Another thing I, I, I would like to show you is the heterogeneity of the microcalcification. That's why I explained at the beginning during my PhD, it was really challenging because so, I scanned a line in the middle of the calcification just to show you I've extracted spectra IR and OP, OPTIR and Raman spectra in the same spot in this area. So you can see we have no carbonates, right? This is confirmed by the Raman spectra. And on the other part of the calcification, you can see we have a carbonate peak which is correlated with the Raman spectra as well. 
So which is really good because finally we can see on this line, just on this spot, we have a carbonate substitution, which is confirmed, we are confident that it's real carbonate substitution because it's confirmed with Raman and IR. So to conclude my work, I would like to say there is a good potential to use the photothermal system in the study of the breast microcalcification. So we can identify easily the carbonate peak in IR and Raman. We can correlate the both data in the same time, so which is really fantastic. So the next step will be to see the spatial distribution of these different elements in terms of carbonate, phosphate, proteins, directly using single IR wavelength uh, imaging, and maybe investigate the presence of other mineral species. So I would like to say thank you to everyone, the Biospec group, in particular Nick and Francesca, all the people involved in this project. And I would like to say thank you to the Photothermal team, Mustafa. You are really great, always kind, always ready and available to answer to my questions. So a big thank you. Thank you very much, Pascaline, for a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, so, some some uh, questions. Uh, please uh, remember to type those if if, if you have those. So so uh, one question would be that uh, what's where comes the need to to use different substrates, for example, barium fluoride and and stainless steel. So um, we. When I use the FTIR system, I use the barium fluoride. It's what I use to see the calcification. For the Raman system, to enhance the signal, I use the barium fluoride, the stainless steel slide. And I would like to see if it's possible on the same slide to use IR and Raman with the photothermal system. We, we were not sure about that. We need to investigate. So it's it would be great if you can use directly one slide, stainless steel slide, it's cheaper than barium fluoride, completely remove the barium fluoride. And yeah, focus on this one for use both techniques, it could be great. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there is another question. One. Yeah, please, Mustafa. Pascal, have you um, considered glass um, as a substrate, given that um, you, know, you, you can put thicker slides, thicker sections, uh, and then I would imagine that putting them on glass uh, would, would work well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I need to, to investigate this part of, of that, but yeah, it's absolutely possible to use only glass as well, yeah. Okay. Uh, then there was a question that, uh, why is it important for you to study uh, the carbonate peak at 872? reciprocal centimeters and not use the direct the peak at uh, 1452, for example. Oh, yeah. um, so, yeah, so it is possible to have the carbonate peak uh, in the 1400 wave number region. But this peak is also related to the paraffin signal, which is really strong in IR. So if you have access to fresh or frozen tissue section, so you can use this uh, peak to calculate different ratio between carbonate and phosphate. But when you have paraffin, paraffin section, it's more complicated. And in the literature, they always used this um, peak at A74 wave numbers. Then we had a, a question coming in, so thanking you for a very good presentation. Uh, have you tried to take IR images? Uh, with the on, on the, I, I assume that the normal IR images. Uh, yes. Uh, this is here. So yes, we, we also try to, to take some IR images, but we are still limited with the with the, the detection of the carbonate peak, and it's sometimes saturated due to the difference of thickness of the sample. So 
that's why we, we wanted to use the photothermal system as well to avoid that and to be faster uh, in the analysis to have a single IR wavelength image uh, per sample. Yeah. 